You are... someone. Yourself, perhaps. It's hard to tell, really. You cast a shadow, but you can't see your own reflection. Anyway, you're stuck on an island, and there are puzzles everywhere. And you need to solve the puzzles. At least, you assume that you need to solve the puzzles. It seems that way. Again, it's hard to tell. But still, you're a person, and you're on an island, and there are puzzles. This is The Witness, my name is Tiger, and this is a Hyper Review. The story of The Witness is... vague and unclear, although I think this is by design more than anything else. The protagonist is never explicitly given a face or a voice or a gender or any defining features at all, presumably because they're meant to be a player insert. The game begins with no explanation, and as the player moves through the world, they're expected to piece together everything for themselves, as no direct narrative experience is offered. The only dialogue in the game comes in the form of a series of audio recordings that can be found scattered across the island, although these recordings are, for the most part, simply quotes by famous historical figures like Nietzsche and Confucius, and don't really provide any story either. In fact, and I'm trying to say this as spoiler-free as I possibly can, the story of The Witness is virtually non-existent right up until the end, and if you follow me on Twitter, you know how I feel about the end of this game. It commits, in my opinion, one of the biggest story-ending crimes there is. But the story isn't the only part of The Witness to look at, and where this game definitely comes into its own is the puzzles that make up the entirety of the game's mechanics. The core gameplay really, is the solving of a vast array of line drawing puzzles, each of which can be placed into one or more categories. You might, for example, need to ensure that the line you've drawn from start to end passes through certain points marked by black dots. Another puzzle style requires you to use environmental clues to determine what the correct path to take is. And a third involves you using the line to split the puzzle grid so that coloured boxes are completely segregated. What is fantastic about this is that even though the game offers you no explicit tutorials, it always gives you an incredibly simple lead-in and very gradually ramps up the difficulty so that you get that explicit aha moment about how the different mechanics work, and eventually you're solving incredibly complex logic problems that combine the aspects of multiple puzzle types with ease. The puzzles are the definite core of this game, and if you love logic puzzles that can range from simple to intensely mind-bending, the lack of story isn't really going to be a problem. The interface you're provided with to solve these puzzles is virtually non-existent, which sounds like it should be a problem, but in reality, the minimalism actually lends to the charm of the game. When you're walking around the island, you have nothing. No heads-up display, no map, not even a targeting reticule unless you enable it in the options. It's only when you activate your puzzle solving mode, done with a single mouse click, that you are presented with the highly simplistic puzzle solving interface. It might not sound like much, but honestly this game doesn't need anything extra in terms of UI. There is a downfall here though, as a lot of the puzzles in the game are definitely not accessibility friendly. If you want 100% The Witness, you're going to have to solve puzzles that require you to be able to not only hear, but also differentiate between tones and overlaid sounds. And because these tones and sounds aren't tied to speech, the subtitles and captions don't offer any help. So deaf, hard of hearing and tone deaf gamers are out of luck, as are those with auditory processing issues that prevent layers of sounds from being distinguished. Another puzzle type requires the player to separate coloured blocks into distinct groups, so all colours are in their own group. This is fine when colours are just black and white, but eventually you're dealing with large numbers of colour combinations like reds, greens, yellows and purples, and also sometimes these colours change randomly, and because there's no colourblind mode, players who can't distinguish between various colours or shades are going to have difficulties here. The last issue I'll bring up today, though 
perhaps not the last issue the game actually has with regards to accessibility is that towards the end of the game, some of the puzzles involved fast paced movements of the puzzle within the grid, which given how much you need to focus on the puzzles to solve them at that point, can definitely trigger motion sickness. These issues would all be more acceptable if the game had options to assist the players in overcoming them. Proper tonal captions, colourblind options, options to reduce flashing or high repetition flickering, but instead it has nothing. Speaking of nothing, some of my friends were a bit concerned when I said I was interested in this game because they weren't sure how it would interact with my ADHD. They thought I'd likely get bored, because there's no real action, and some of the puzzles can be absolute stumpers, taking ages to figure out. But ADHD is sometimes contradictory, and I actually found that this game was something I could get into a flow state quite easily with. The fact that early puzzles in any given area are incredibly easy to solve means that you're given a lot of reward feedback in an incredibly short period of time, and as the puzzles become more difficult, the time increase between solves is just on the short side of being too long, so you want to keep chasing the satisfaction high. If there's ever a puzzle that takes too long and becomes frustrating or tedious, then you're never forced to keep trying it until you reach the final area at least, as you can just move on to a different set of puzzles and let that one kind of background process in your head, because it definitely will, and come back to it later. The game doesn't really railroad you, which means you can go anywhere and do anything, mostly, even if you just want to run around in circles for a little bit, which can actually aid you in solving some of the environmental puzzles that the game offers. From the way the tutorial experiences were naturally integrated into the game, to the fact that it actively promoted mental multitasking, The Witness was fantastic for my ADHD experience, but if you don't happen to love logic puzzles, then the same probably won't apply to you. So my feelings about this are obviously pretty complicated. On the one hand, you've got an excellent puzzling experience that manages to balance intuitive learning with gradually increased difficulty and a large variety in style, but on the other you've got a severe lacking when it comes to accessibility, and that freaking ending which I still cannot get over. Holy crap, and yes I saw the secret ending and I am still so dang ticked off. Bottom line, if you like puzzle games and you don't get frustrated too easily when you can't solve something, then you'll probably enjoy The Witness, as long as you don't expect anything narrative wise. Okay, I love you, bye bye.